On October 23, 2013, California State Assembly member from District 22, Kevin Mullen, and San Mateo County Supervisor Warren Slocum hosted the first annual Connect 13 conference at YouTube headquarters in San Bruno, California. Strengthening communities through social media was the theme. Bringing together social media experts and San Mateo County attendees from business, public, and government sectors to discuss the opportunities and challenges of using social media to communicate, collaborate, legislate, and participate. Peninsula Television is proud to bring you this conference, and all of the segments are available on YouTube and at www.pentv.tv slash connect13. I now have the pleasure of introducing Chris Rasmussen. Chris is, the, is a social media officer and has been a law enforcement officer for 22 years, having served in both the San Francisco Police Department and the Redwood City Police Department since 1997. He is one of the founding members of the Redwood City Police social media team, where he helped develop the citywide social media policy. Chris was also one of the founding members and coordinator of the Bay Area Law Enforcement Social Media Group. Chris has 20 years of experience as a law enforcement trainer in a variety of fields, including social media. He is part of the Police Honor Guard, Patrol Rifle Team, as well as the Technology Committee, a position where he has had the opportunity to shape policy, implement social media tools, and use it to engage and inform the public. He's going to talk about social media in law enforcement. Before I turn it over to Chris, let me add that the Redwood City Police Department has won the California Peace Officers Association's Award of Distinction for its social media effort to connect the community with the city, which received quite a bit of uh, media attention. The award will be handed out at a statewide leadership summit in Ontario in November, and I'm sure that Chris had a hand in that well-deserved honor. So let me bring up to the stage Chris Rasmussen. Hello, good afternoon, thanks for having me here. Um, you kind of went over my, my beginning part, so I'll just say, uh, we also won an international award through um, the Smile Corporation Lawscom, which was uh, done in Virginia. Uh, it was an international award that we received and we got to fly back to Virginia and pick up that award. So that was another great honor that we received uh, for our social media program. So today I'm gonna touch on a little bit of social media and law enforcement. What does social media have to do with law enforcement? It's very simple, you know, we use a lot of, um, social media tools as well to embrace the community and what we do. Um, we post pictures, news articles, alerts, crime prevention tips, all that kind of uh, stuff to help the community engage with us and that we can get out timely information to them as well. Recent studies showed that um, cities that use social media are really embracing it and they're actually going improving communications, they're improving their uh, service to the community, uh, they're improving civic engagement, and they're also improving uh, emergency response and civic development. And you can see here that uh, since August 11, um, governments are actually using a lot more social media channels and social media tools uh, to get their messages across. Today I'm gonna to talk about two that we use, and the leaders obviously are Facebook and Twitter. Governments have a higher adoption rate of Twitter right now, uh, and that's because it's able to broadcast a, a lot of information to a lot of different people right at, right at one time. Um, but the popularity still kind of goes heavily favors with uh, Facebook. So for us, we kind of came up with a, a social media strategy that kind of drives what we do and how we do it. Um, we identified our target market, which is our community that we serve. Uh, they're the people that we're, we're getting our information out to. They're the people that we want to push the information to. Uh, we're focusing on the strategy. We don't focus a lot on the tactics of social media, just the strategy and, and how we're going to use it. Uh, we promote a unique value to our community. We give them timely and accurate information. Now, that's what, that's what our, our strategy is, is get that information out to the community, get it out there quickly and accurately so they can use it in, in the way they need to use it. Some of the four main strategies that we use, we push information just like the old you know, communication strategies. We push it out there, we push information, road closures, what's going on here, what's going on there. Uh, but the unique thing that social media gives is that we pull information as well. Uh, we can talk to people, we can engage with them, we can you know, communicate with them, we can get tips from them. Um, the pull also goes into the investigative side of policing. We can capture a lot of information on on social media and I don't that's a whole nother class that I could teach you about what we find on social media and how we use it as far as investigations and law enforcement um, practices 
and the customer service aspect of it. We build, we build, we're building the relationships. It's just like if we're in a neighborhood, you know, we're in our neighborhood, we go out to our neighborhood meetings, we go and we give public, you know, addresses to the neighborhood. It's the same thing for social media. That is our online neighborhood. And we're giving them information, we're receiving information, and it's no different. What do citizens want from social media? They want to share and receive information with police through digital mobile channels. It's a lot easier, right? You can just jump on Facebook and say, hey, there's, there's this going on, or hey, I like this, or, or what. They don't have to pick up the phone. They don't have to have a police car come out to the, the front of their house and be embarrassed by all the neighbors and everything. They can just get on social media. Uh, they're always looking for new ways to engage with us to tell us what's going on out there. And um, it keeps some sort of anonymity as well. Uh, they want to see more discussions and personal contacts. They like to feel that they can jump on social media and talk to the police right away, and they'll probably pretty much get a response. And they want to be part of the solution. Everybody wants to be part of the solution. You know, when it comes to your neighborhoods, it comes to, you know, what's going on in your neighborhood and crime. They want to, they want to help. They want to be part of that solution. So some of the basic usage, you all heard this before, if you build it, they'll come. Well, we kind of put it in a different light. We kind of uh, made our spin on this, and this is what we use uh, pretty much to drive what we do. We built it with, the relevant, with relevant and interesting information every day. We put relevant information on our social media sites every day so that the public will be there when, when they need it uh, for timely, accurate public safety information and emergency. And I think this is our key mission statement for what, how we do social media. Uh, like I, I like I like to say, some th people we built our social media sites with with rainbows and, and unicorns. Okay, we kind of put the stuff up there that people like to see. We put the interesting stuff up there that people want to hear about, and we draw them in. So when we need to have their attention, we have it. If there's a disaster or a crisis, we have their attention now, and now we can communicate with them directly. The reasons why social media works for us, for law enforcement, for government agencies, is because the uh, information is immediate. We control the information. We control all the information that we put out. Uh, we have the ability to respond to inaccurate or negative information that's put across the social media or put out. Um, one interesting thing is that we had a, a fire on Woodside Road uh, last week, and there were some tweets going out that said there were fatalities uh, involved in the fire. And with social media, I was able to jump right back on and say no. You know, I've talked to the fire command. There has been no reports of any casualties right now or any fatalities right now. Um, so that's important that people know that right away you're getting accurate information right from me, which I was standing right outside of the, of the line. So I think that's important that it's very immediate. The interaction, we, we, we help facilitate interaction and engagement. That's what it's all about. It's social media. It's talking. It's two-way conversation. It's no more of the police saying, you know, go away, there's nothing to see here. Uh, you know, that there's nothing going on, move along, you know, get out of the way. It's a, a real conversation. It's a real engagement with the community. We really like to get out there and talk. The audience, most of social media is free. It's, it's mostly free. We all use it for free. Uh, and it's a very unique, big, and dynamic, diverse people that we're talking to. So it really can open up the reaches is incredible with social media. It's scalable. Every government agency can scale this back to what they want to use it for. They can do what they want with it. They can move it around, uh, and it, it, it tailors to everybody's organizational needs. And, you know, from this here, our law enforcement agencies are finding immense value in social media technology. That's just the key. That's a blank slide. All right, so I'm going to hit on a couple that we use. Uh, we use Twitter, obviously. Uh, we push information, anything from missing persons to wanted people to road closures to the good things that we do uh, every day in our department. Uh, we post those out on, on, on Twitter. You can follow us. We had the great opportunity. We have our hashtag out on all of our, uh, our police cars, which is kind of cool. And we use Facebook. Facebook's more of our online community. Like I said, it's our neighborhood. It's our online neighborhood. Uh, we, what we like to do is we like to post unique stories. Like I said, the butterflies and rainbows and unicorns. Uh, we like to put out the good stories, the puppies and the, uh, the kittens and all that kind of stuff. But we also want to show a human side to us. Uh, we really like to show that we are just people. We're just doing a good job. We're out there in the community, and we like to show the human interest stories. Some of the, the highest uh, ratings that we got on Facebook, some of the highest likes and the best reach are some of them. Uh, one of them was an officer that had retired after like 34 years of service, 
and his you know comments were on there for days and, and the reach was incredible because everybody got on there and said thank you for your service and and thanks for doing a good job and happy retirement so those kind of things are really important to us to put out there that, that we're human and that, that we're just out there and we get too much ne negative publicity anyway we get too much negative media anyway with the the bad stuff that's going on in the world so we try and use our facebook page to show all the good stuff that we try and do which doesn't get highlighted very much Here's a picture of a German exchange student that came out. She wanted to be a cop uh, one day, so she came out and uh, you know we put that up there. That's, I think that's pretty cool. Pictures of swearing in from new officers. You know, people like to see this kind of stuff. Uh, we get some pretty good stuff. Uh, the last one I'd like to talk about is Nixle. Nixle is our official press release platform that we use. Uh, we provide direct communications to, to the citizens with, uh, with Nixle. Um, on multiple platforms, including the text, email, and web messaging. And Nixle also gives us the uh, ability to push it straight to uh, Facebook and Twitter as well. The, the cool thing about Nixle is that you can, the citizen can customize their messages that they want to receive. Uh, they can scale it down to, to anything from our community alerts that we put out all the way to the, the disaster and the information, that they, the emergency alerts that they, they need. Here's our Nixle wire page. Uh, the cool thing about Nixle is, like I said, you can customize it. The citizens can customize what they want, um, and they can scale it back to whether they want to just see, you know, the road closures. They want to see when the zombies are attacking, or they want to see when, you know, just the uh, the puppies are out there. So they can scale it back, which is really important. They're not they don't have to get everything that we send. They can scale it back to what they want. Uh, Nixle's free to citizens. Anybody can sign up. And it's a really good service that we use. Uh, like I said, we also use it for our press releases. All of our official press releases go through there. And um, it's a good service to use. They, um, the last thing on Nixle is that um, a lot of agencies are now using it. So say you work in Fremont and you live in Redwood City, you can subscribe to both uh, Nixle feeds from both departments. So if something you're at work in Fremont and something goes down, you'll get that emergency alert as well. All right, so that's it. Any questions? Anybody have any questions on that? Yes, in the back. Negative comments on our Facebook page? That's a good question. I, I heard some of you guys talking about that earlier. What we like to do is, is take it as an opportunity. Any ne negative information or a negative comment on our Facebook page, unless it violates our terms of posting, which is clearly stated on our Facebook page, We'll leave it up there, and we take it as an opportunity to, to respond and to show how professional we are by our response. Um, so we don't get into a war. We don't get into a he said, she said on the Facebook page. But we kind of you know, use it as an opportunity to show that, that we are professional and that we will respond to you. Thank you for your comments, and that we show that we are a little bit higher than that. And we take that opportunity to, again, get our message across. We don't like, I think I heard a, a comment on, on Twitter about don't feed the trolls. That's exactly right. I've heard that a million times in, in my social media travels. Well, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna feed those trolls that come onto our site. That's our site, that's our house, that's our area. I'm not gonna let that happen. So we'll go above and beyond and we'll make sure that it turns into a positive comment from us. Yes, sir. As far as county agencies and, and local agencies, I'm not sure what the county's going to do. They, they use that SMC alert. Marshall, I didn't think he left. He, he's probably more equipped to talk about the SMC alerts. Um, most of the agencies I've encountered with are going to a Nixle platform uh, because it's just more, it's more um, user friendly for us. Um, and there's a lot of other features that are built into Nixle um, that we can use. You know, there's tip messaging, there's other components that we use. Um, so not that we haven't coordinated in that. We're using Nixle. Um, there's a lot of other agencies that are using Nixle. I think Twitter's probably the biggest 
push that it's gonna, you're going to see it on Twitter. The, the main information, everything that we put on Nixel can be fed right to Twitter. Um, so that's probably where you're going to see most of the information from us. But as far as a coordination, not that's not planned right now. Yes. Yes, we did. We have. I have another presentation. No, that's true. Um, I had a tweet one time, gunshots at this block of this avenue. Um, and yeah, it was going on at that time. There was, there was, I was actually responding to the call that was down there. Um, so yeah, we do. And we have to you know, remind people that this is not a monitored 24-7. Not yet. I mean, I think it's going that way, but um, it's not monitored 24-7. And that, yeah, we get a lot of reports of that. People will come on and say, there's a suspicious person hanging out over here. Or there's a guy with a mask on over here. I mean, we do get a lot of uh, citizens feeding back on that with, with reports. Yeah, absolutely. Did that answer your question? We, yeah. we try and get to them. We try and get to them. I mean, obviously, we don't monitor it 24-7. Yeah, my wife tells me that I shouldn't monitor 24-7, um, but sometimes it's hard not to. But, um, yeah, we try to be on there. We try to look. We, we, we try, but it's not monitored. 20. I mean, I can't just promise you that if you get on Twitter and say this, that we're going to be out there. Um, but we do get a lot of reports of crimes. Hi there. Uh, I was just curious if, if you took this upon yourself to get into it or if you, you were encouraged by uh, upper, upper uh, command, I guess, to get out there and make it happen? Did you encounter any issues with openness and uh, secrecy, any of those kinds of things? Kind of both. You know, I, I think I realized pretty early on that we needed social media and law enforcement before it even became a popular. And I pushed very hard at the beginning of it that we needed to have a presence in social media. Um, and finally, it kind of some of the new blood started coming through and started realizing that, yes, this is a, a viable place that we need to be. Um, so yeah, I kind of took it upon myself, but then again, it was a lot of teamwork and a lot of effort to get it up and going and to move forward. Um, and then the other part of the question was... I guess, did you get support from the upper... Yes, yeah. I mean, initially, no. Initially, it was the same old adage of, you know, nothing to see here, move along. Um, you know, we're not going to put anything out. We're not going to tell the public anything. And, and that's kind of, I think that's kind of going away. And it, it was very slow in the last three years. It's been a very, you know, uh, long haul over those years to now where it's, you know, let's get everything out there. We're, we want to be as transparent as possible. So it, it, it's, it takes new thinking. It takes new people. It takes new management. It takes new philosophies and, and people pushing from the bottom up. And so, yeah, we, um, we're getting through that now. And I think that's pretty common with any law enforcement agency or any government agency is getting that push through from the upper people to kind of buy into this program. And so now it's fully supported by the whole department, which is, which is great. more questions? Awesome. Well, there's my contact information. Um, if you guys are in government agencies, most of you guys are, I think, uh, we run a, um, a Bay Area so a law enforcement social media group, which covers about 50 agencies across the Bay Area, and we get together quarterly. Um, we've also opened it up to fire departments and OES services and stuff. So if you're ever interested in that, check out that hashtag. Uh, we run quarterly meetings in all different locations, and we, we talk about the same things you guys are doing here. So it's really informative. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you, Chris. Thank you. Appreciate it.